Okay, we have a 2013 Silverado with the 5.3 liter Texas edition, two wheel drive, extended cab, and we're just going to do a walk through. So I've already uh, ID'd the vehicle. It does have an up level radio, does have automatic uh, AC. Uh, I believe it's without trailer brake, under 8600. Does have the uh, uh, vehicle stability uh, control. Does not have RPO code Z95. Uh, I think I already said it, but it is a 2000, uh, 2013 5.3 4x2. And we're just going to do a quick walkthrough. This is to show you what this scanner is capable of on a vehicle, uh, this year make and model vehicle. And most of these vehicles will be similar. So if you, you know, bought a 2014, you can, uh, or if you had this connected to a 2014, you're going to have a similar, uh, if not identical, uh, set of options here. First thing we're going to do is hot function, hot function. Just show you, this is just a quick menu to get to common things that you may need to do. Uh, you know, oil reset, electronic parking brake, brake bleed, programming your key uh, and or remote. Uh, now, don't I don't know why Autel does this. It's got change tire size here. That does not change the tire size. It's the tire type uh, and what pressure that you run your tires at. That way, your I believe your TPMS. Uh, you, you can actually set the tire pressure that you want to run your, your tires at so the TPMS system won't activate if your tires drop below or above a certain threshold. So you can actually set that. Okay, so we're going to go back. We'll go to Diagnose. Auto Scan is where it's just going to scan every module on the vehicle. So we're going to, we're going to hand select the modules. We've got two pages here. And of course, the engine control module will be the first one we're going to do. And basically, what we're looking at is the active test and the special functions. Um, again, your ECU, ECU information, that's where you're going to get all your software and part numbers for the ECU. In this case, it's the, uh, the ECM for the engine. Uh, then you've got your trouble codes, your freeze frame, your live data. We'll take a look at active test. That looks like we've got two pages. Of different things you can do with the active test um, and this is just like little ops checks that you can do to verify that for instance the fuel pump relay you can actually energize it make it come on if you if you're suspecting a fuel pump uh, issue uh, generator L terminal you can ramp your alternator uh, up and down the voltage to, to make sure that the con uh, computer can control the alternator things like that your evap solenoids fan relays Page two, misfire graphic. If you got a misfire, you can uh, pull that up and you can watch an actual graphic uh, of your cylinders and get an idea of uh, you know which cylinder is giving you the problem. Starter relay, you know that sort of thing. Now that's two pages there of active test. So now let's go over to special functions and see what we got there. This is similar to active test. Uh, but it actually gets a little deeper into letting you do things. Uh, here you can reset your fuel trim. Sometimes, depending on if you're getting uh, different percentages of alcohol in your fuel, it will throw your trim off and you can reset that. Uh, cylinder power balance, that's handy to, to be able to see if all your cylinders are hitting equally. Fuel injector balance, again, that's to check to make sure that your fuel injectors are all uh, equally balanced. Uh, basically, you hook a fuel pressure gauge to it, and you can watch the fuel pressure change as it pulses each injector. A cylinder, cylinder deactivation. Uh, so you can actually deactivate different cylinders to uh, see if one uh, is contributing to the combustion process, O2 heater, throttle sweep, so that's some of the stuff you can do there. 
on uh, the ECU. Now we'll do transmission control module, active test, one page. Of course, you're going to have your shift solenoids, your pressure solenoids, uh, torque converter control solenoid, so that if you're having transmission issues, you can actually energize those solenoids and uh, see if they're working or not. Special functions, transmission oil life reset, transmission adaption, adaptation rather. Uh, let's see, we'll do the brake control module. Of course, this is where you're going to check all your uh, anti-skid valves and ABS motor, uh, your solenoids, stuff like that. Make sure all that stuff's working. Special functions. Now, there's your automated bleed. Uh, Yaw rate sensor calibration. Brake pressure sensor calibration. Airbag, let's see, we got special functions for the airbag. Uh, set up new sensing diagnostic module. So if, you're, if your airbag deployed and you got another module, you can actually install it and uh, set it up to where it'll work. Body control module. Got two pages here. This is where you can energize your fog lamps, parking lamps, your horn. Uh, to make sure that the computer... Uh, you know, can can uh, control them. Turn signal wiper, shift solenoids, rear door unlock, special functions. Got one page of special functions, three items there. Uh, body control auxiliary. Rear fog lamp, inclination sensor enable, fuel pump control module, active test, fuel pressure control, fuel pump, special functions, fuel pump trim reset, cluster, got some active tests there. There you can check your instrument cluster, see if, if it's uh, operational or not. Park assist, no active test or special functions, trouble codes, live data on that only, memory seat, got some active tests, so you can run your seat uh, back and forth, up and down, all that, make sure that uh, the computer is able to control it. And what that's handy for is if you don't know if the switch is bad, if the computer can't control it, if you try to run your seat using the scanner here and it's still not running, you can pretty much eliminate the switch because if the switch was the problem, the scanner should be able to tell the computer we want to go, you know, uh, forward, reverse, up, down, uh, you know, all that. And if it's still not doing it, then you'd have to go elsewhere. Either the computer's not able to control it, uh, you got some wiring issues, uh, or whatever. Uh, radio. Activate all your speakers. If you think you got a blown speaker, you can uh, make each speaker sound. Heated heated seat indicators, front window motor. Uh, go to the next page. Amp Bose amp got an active test. Right there, if you have the Bose amp, you can. Ops check your amp, make sure it'll power all the speakers, subwoofer, and all that. Whoops. Where was we at? Passenger door. Uh, digital radio. Now this I don't believe has electronic suspension, but if it did, then this is some of the stuff that you'd be able to test. You can actually energize the compressor, make sure the compressor's coming on, the open the exhaust valve, all that sort of thing. Reset reset diagnostic counter.
nothing there. And I try to go through this as quick as I can so you don't have to sit there and watch, you know, any more than you have to. You got one page of active test for the HVAC temperature door. You can run your temperature uh, mode control uh, doors and and all that. AC request. You can tell the compressor to kick on. Things like that. Uh, special functions. Here you can set the after blow option if you want the fan to continue to blow after the vehicle's turned off. That helps dry out the duct. Uh, the inlet duct so that if you got leaves if you got that musty smell uh, whenever you first turn your AC on that's usually because you got leaves and then uh, stuff down in that uh, inlet uh, duct and it's starting to decompose so if you keep that dry uh, you're better off where are we at uh, remote control door lock receivers got some special functions for it yeah program fobs key fob button test if you think your fobs not working right that'll let you know rear heated seat and last but not least personal audio link module special functions radio RPO selection and that's pretty much it. Uh, again, this was a 2013 Silverado. Had a pretty good selection of, of uh, features there to to uh, let you help you know help you troubleshoot uh, these GM vehicles. They're they're usually pretty good about it. Uh, one of the bad things that I don't like, and it's it's GM's deal. It's not this scanner's fault. Is the tire size you can't change the tire size like you can on a Ford and a Chrysler Ford and Chrysler you can change the from any factory sized tires using these scanners GM doesn't allow you to do that um, so I'm not exactly sure how GM sizes the tires they probably have to uh, reflash the computer but I'm not 100% sure about that. Anybody that knows that for sure, I've, I've seen and heard different things. I personally have never done it on a GM other than with a aftermarket programmer. And I've got conflicting information about how GM itself does it. So if you're a GM mechanic and if a guy brings a truck into you and they've put 33 or 34 inch tall tires on it, First of all, are you able to program the tires? If you are, what do, what software do you use uh, to do that? Uh, that'd be some information I'd like to know. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it. This the, this particular scanner is an MS906TS. The TS is for the uh, TPMS option that's built in it. Uh, and I'll show you that real quick. That little buzzer is a reminder to pull the VCI. So this has got the TPMS feature to it, to where it's got the built-in receiver and transmitter for the sensors. Um, so it does specific TPMS, you know, tire pressure monitor system, uh, you know, work. It, it it's able to, you know, back on the reg on the other screen it was just that you're able to do some TPMS troubleshooting but if you want to program sensors and activate sensors you've got to have a built-in transmitter and receiver to be able to do all that and this scanner has got it all built in uh, so that's one feature the 906 BT is the Bluetooth version it's exactly like this scanner but it does not have the built-in TPMS options the 906 is the same scanner, but it is not Bluetooth. It's got a cord, so you're tethered to the car with a uh, with a cord, which is you know not that big of a deal. But depends on how much money you want to spend. This is the the top of the line in the 906 series. Uh, this is about a $1,600 scanner new, and 
The BT is a couple hundred dollars cheaper, and then the regular 906 is a couple hundred dollars cheaper than that. So, give you an idea. The updates are about $500 for this particular scanner, uh, about $400 for the BT, and I think about $300 for the regular 906. So, if you don't do a whole lot of TPMS work, get the BT, because if you don't do tire pressure work, there's no reason to pay for an update that you don't need. I hope that makes sense. So keep that in mind. Anyway, that's it. I'm out. You guys take care.